Welcome back to Becky Amia Horse Training and this is LR Blue Ambrose and this is his eighth ride and today we were going to ride out and the only reason I'm starting in the round pen today is because it just gives me an opportunity to practice this gate one more time. Um, my uh, cameraman is going to follow me on the entire ride out. Um, there's going to be a little bit more editing in this video because because he's gonna have to set up in different spots in the pasture for me to be able to catch everything. Um, gonna try to catch everything, good or bad. Um, we're just gonna try to make a nice little loop out in the creek pasture, go up some hills, cross a little creek, even though there's no water in it right now. We're taking the dogs with us. Uh, he's gonna have to ride along with a four-wheeler. He's gonna have to walk through the cows. And uh, hopefully everything goes well, and if he decides to be naughty, we're going to find every hill in the pasture and make him go up and down it and get him rode down a little bit. If not, it'll be a nice smooth lap out. So thanks for watching, and uh, if you haven't seen the other videos, I'll link them in the description box below. Thanks for watching. All right, I'd already done groundwork with him before I stepped on. And I'm going to go ahead and flex his head both directions and keep on practicing that basic routine like I have with every other ride. It's really important that I have a good head flexion back and forth, especially going out to the pasture. If I can't get it at a standstill standing here in the round pen, I'm sure not going to get it if something spooks him out in the pasture. Now he already knows and anticipates opening up this gate and I like right here how he starts taking fewer and fewer steps trying to figure out where his body position needs to be and Charlie's kind of a pain and he runs back and forth and does that thing that he does but that's all distractions that this colt is going to have to deal with in his lifetime and so it doesn't bother me too much as long as Charlie doesn't take a bite at his nose. I'm okay with it. It's just part of what goes on on the ranch. Um, there's always going to be a dog working around him. So less of a fight here. He figures out where he's supposed to be physically when I put him up against this gate to dismount him and tell him he's done a good job. And I'm just going to walk him a few steps here and walk over to the first gate that we want to go to that we're going to go out of. Um, gates are extremely important to me. Uh, for every ranch that I work for, they have some sort of gate that they have to go through uh, to go out and work their cattle or go check their cattle or horses or sheep. And I want to know that these horses are not going to leave me or leave somebody at a gate. It's really important that they behave for me to mount and dismount and walk through these gates that I cannot physically work from their back. And I have had horses leave me at these gates. Not this particular one, but the next one I'm going to ride up to. And it's not fun. It's never fun when you have to walk home. Um, so I just always try to be able to work that and, and get that experience so I can give feedback to the owner or the breeder on that particular horse that I'm riding. These cows are actually home a little early, earlier than they normally would be. We had a fire in the pasture that they summer in, and so they're home dry lotting already for winter. And this just makes for a good opportunity to walk him through, let him get acquainted with them. I'm not actually gonna make them do anything right now. Um, this guy was raised with cattle, so he knows them already, but he's just never had somebody on his back riding through them.
so this is one of the gates I was talking about right here dismounting at this gate in the wide open space like this having to open and close it on foot walk through it and mount back up again there's a lot of opportunity there for colts to be really naughty there are usually horses in the pasture to the north of this so to the right side of where i'm going through there's a llama out there and if they are standing anywhere near they usually get these horses attention and either they spook or they nicker or they want to run towards or run away from and it just gives them an excuse to be naughty and so if anybody will stand good for me at these this particular gate I am extremely appreciative and it's always good feedback for me to give owners and breeders that their horse was well behaved for me to mount and dismount right here. I kind of got lucky on this trip out. There were only cattle up here on the north side of this fence line, so that was kind of no big deal. Usually when you have horses that are raised in herds and there is a herd in the adjacent fence, that first ride out can be kind of tricky when you're trying to teach them that you are the leader and they're supposed to go where you tell them to go and they want to go back with their herd. So I got real lucky right here, but at this point, when I first head out like this, I kind of let them go whatever speed they want to go. Uh, within reason, obviously, if he wanted to go running off, um, I'd have to bend him around and do an emergency stop on him. But this is kind of the speed he wants to take. If he wants to take a trot, I would let him take a trot on his own. Um, with these smaller, younger colts like this that aren't developed yet, going up and down hill and balancing a rider can always be just a little bit treacherous because they, they kind of tend to be like a like a like uh, an avalanche, if you will. They kind of get going downhill and they lose their balance so they just start going faster and faster. So I'm always really careful on the steepness of the hills that I take them up and down and the angle with which I take them up and down those hills. Uh, so so I always have to be real careful with that. Stuff that's raised out naturally is going to have more balance and understand the topography a little bit better, but they still have to adjust for the weight of the rider. These particular hills that I'm working on right now are kind of shallow, so it's a good starting point to teach him how to carry my weight. And he started to go into a trot right there and I held him back because that's what I'm talking about, the avalanche technique where they just kind of start to get to going faster and faster and you'll end up with a wreck and, you know, and with these, he's a medium sized colt for what I start. When I get on some of the really teeny tiny little guys, um, I end up using a crupper on them with my saddle because I end up just everything goes forward up their neck on them. And folks will ask me if it has anything to do with withers. They think the horse has no withers. And what I have learned through the years of riding these little colts is it has nothing to do with the withers or the height of their withers. First of all, at this age, they don't have a whole lot, a lot of withers yet, um, despite what their pedigree says or what their parents look like. Um, what it has to do with is the width of their shoulders. They're not very wide through their shoulders, so they're not going to be able to carry a saddle no matter how well your saddle fits. And now I have a little bit smaller saddles that are custom made uh, to be narrower through the bar spread for these Colts that I'm riding, and so they'll fit them a little bit better. But on those little teeny tinies, those barely coming two-year-olds that I ride, I'll go ahead and put a crupper on them to help keep my saddle from sliding forward when I'm going downhill like this.
And if somebody wants to be naughty, I can steer them and take them directly back straight up that hill there on my right. And that really takes it all out of them. And that's what I love about this pasture is that if anybody wants to be naughty or wants to be hot-headed or needs to be played out, I can go through this pasture and take them up and down every hill from north to south and south to north. And it kind of takes that edge off of them and they're a little more open-minded and willing and ready to learn. And I have that I guess convenience if you will by having this pasture here this pasture is such an integral part of my cha training curriculum I don't know how big this pasture is but I can certainly make it as easy or as, as hard of a ride as these particular colts want to make it if if somebody needs to just go out and make a quick loop we can go make a quick loop and and make a big circle out of it or if somebody needs to do a conditioning ride i can work them up and down all of these hills and gets them out of the arena but they still get a good conditioning ride and so i can use this in lots of different facets of my training regimen Usually there's water down in this creek and there is nothing scarier than when the dogs go and take a dip in the water and Weatherby goes for a swim and then he pops up out of nowhere and shakes off all the water. It really scares the heck out of everybody. But it's dry right now. It was uh, late fall when we were videoing this and Weatherby got him spooked anyway right here when he pops up out of the out of the crick in those trees and I just took that opportunity to bend him around, down regulate, pet him, and go back and carry on. No big deal. And you see how you handle that when you've practiced that down regulating technique over and over and over again. It's easy to bring them back to you and then move on like nothing ever happened and you don't make a big deal out of it. I really like how confident he is here as he goes into this washout. He steps over some tree branches over there that you can't see from this angle. But then he moves out, ears are forward, happy to go forward for me, confident, trotting along. And we go back down into the creek bed again and come up that side of the hill. and. It's kind of a sheer drop off that he has to jump up and I was really impressed that he took it the way he did when he climbs right back up. He doesn't even look for a better spot. He just sees it and he jumps up. This pasture is a place that I ride daily on multiple horses and so I'm pretty familiar with all of the places that horses are going to refuse where they're going to have a difficult time with where they're more likely to go and depending on the level of confidence of each individual i address those different areas at different times in their training because this guy has been raised out like he has and he's been so confident up to this point and so comfortable being out I could probably point him at just about any of the most difficult terrain in this pasture and and he'd probably do it for me um, there are other horses that aren't raised out that are gonna be strictly arena horses 
and I approach this pasture at a different angle with them and then I let them prove me wrong and let them have the confidence to go the different directions that I normally wouldn't take them because I know that they're not going to need to have to know how to do that in their lifetime if that makes sense. And if they've been pretty quiet up to this point, I take the opportunity to lope them out here. And always uphill, it makes it really easy. They play out a whole lot quicker. Um, so they get the loping experience in a wide open space and gain that confidence. At the same token, they're going uphill. They're tiring themselves out. They're playing themselves out. It's easier for me to stop them if I need to. And this particular route that I take right here is, besides being a little bit rocky when I get up in this area, it's uh, pretty free and, and safer terrain than some of the other hills, and it's one of my favorite hills to kind of send them up when I first come out. And this is what it's all about. It's all about those first experiences. When we go back and talk about the very first ride and how Everything that we teach them the very first time, that's the impression that's going to stick in their head. So this first ride out like this is going to leave an impression on him and we want to have a solid, confident impression left on him. And right there, there's some old down barbed wire from an old fence that used to be out in this pasture. and. He steps over it confidently. There are some horses that will not. Um, there are some horses that do touch it and they are very familiar with what barbed wire is and they will flat stop with me. And I actually really enjoy that because a horse that knows to stop when their foot is entangled in something or touching something or they feel resistance, you know, that's going to be a safer individual to ride for the rest of that horse's life. I mean, they really are truly a safer individual to be mounted on. Once I get back up on the top of the pasture here, it's pretty flat the rest of the way. Now if somebody wants to still be full of themselves or needs a little more riding, I can always dip back down again and take the hills the rest of the way home. I can also work them a little bit to the right here. It's a little bit to the east, to that fence line. However, I do have to be a little careful because there are some prairie dog towns going on out there and I have to be careful the footing a little bit more. But since this guy wants to walk on a quiet, long, loose rein, I'm going to go ahead and let him as much as he wants to. Now this water tank right here we're walking towards is one of my nemesis in the summertime. Everybody is scared of it to some degree some take a wider wider route around it than others and weatherby always likes to jump in it and go for a swim and when he jumps out it usually scares the heck out of everybody to some degree or another and it's just another thing that they have to get used to but i'm always prepared for it whenever weatherby jumps out or jumps into the water tank and I think right now it wasn't on and it wasn't running, so it was less scarier than usual, but he handled it really well for walking by it the first time. I go ahead and let him take a trot here, and although this is the direction of home, I don't necessarily consider this running them or trotting them home per se. We're still too far out for it to be trotting in the direction of home. And since he hasn't shown to be antsy at all or have any sort of anxiety while being out and he was being so calm and quiet, I went ahead and used it because this is a really nice stretch of real estate here to trot, trot them down. And I figured I might as well use it while I had it. It's this last little stretch here when we turn to go up that lane to go to the gate. That's where I usually stop trotting and make them come to a walk and walk the rest of the way home.
So going back up to this gate again, I want to make sure he's going to be a gentleman to step off of him, walk through the gate, to step back on him again. You know, if they want to be naughty a little bit here, there are a couple of different ways that I can handle it. Um, oh, and something else I want to point out here is that I dismounted on the right side there. And when out in the pasture in any circumstance, there are times when you do have to dismount on the right side. So I always practice that on these young colts. I've been in a situation where we're checking fence on the side of a hill and we needed to mount back up and we were in a position that we could not mount back up on the left side so we had to mount the horse on the right side so it's really important that I do that mount and dismount when I'm out um, okay so to go back to how to handle it if he were to be naughty in this case you know I have to kind of play it by ear if it's a real precarious situation I have to kind of know when to pick my battles if he's just kind of being silly you know, I might get myself back on again and then go play him out a little bit more, turn around, go back right out to the pasture and play him out a little bit more before I try to practice the mounting and dismounting again. But if he's just play, been playing flat stupid at this point, hypothetically you get one that is being that bad, you kind of have to pick and choose the battles that you have there at that gate and save that for another time because you very well could get left at that gate and you're walking home with a loose horse somewhere um, out running around the ranch and that's never fun because sometimes they go through fences and sometimes they cause a whole lot of havoc and run cattle through fences and it's never pretty. I always take every opportunity that I can to walk past the cattle again and Walking past all of these feeders, the tire feeders, the trough feeders, you know, these are all things that they encounter in their everyday working life. And they're also things that they encounter in a trail course in a ranch horse class. And so the more stuff they see like this, they're better, the better they're gonna be when they go to the arena. I really feel it makes them a lot more solid individuals to handle that kind of stuff. And that cow got him just a little bit excited, so I just bent him around, you know, changed direction a little bit. Anytime I change direction, it's going to saddle him down, it's going to get him quiet, it's going to downregulate them. Anytime I can bend his head around, it will help. And that is something that I think a lot of people are not teaching how to handle ho excited horses, hot horses, horses that spook on the trail, spook in the arena. Um, they're not teaching enough of this, bending them directions and changing directions a lot with them to get them quiet again. And look, we're starting to go long and low with our head and he's quietly walking home. I mean, he is close to home. The other horses are within sight. He's not nickering, he's not calling out to him. You know, and he's cruising right along with both dogs he rode out with, and the four-wheeler. So another opportunity to mount and dismount at a gate and going through this gate is always a little tougher with both of them swinging both directions and we're this close to home sometimes they really want to just leave and head back he's willing to stay with me and he behaves himself so all of these little teeny tests they're all evaluations for me on disposition, trainability, compliancy, work ethic. All of this stuff makes a difference to me. And I pay attention to all that and give my owners lots of feedback on how their horses are. Now I'm going to go ahead and mount back up here because I do want to finish with him going over the bridge and stopping there and calling that a good stopping point rather than at the gate.
And look at what he's learned here going over the bridge. What is this, the second time or the third time now we've gone over this bridge? I think it's the second time. It's been a while since I did the last video. Now, he stepped off of it. That's okay. I, wanna, I want him to step up on it and stand there and wait for me to dismount. And that's all I'm asking him for. And he's really good about it the second time around. And that's where I quit him. And we call it a day right there. Well, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Um, that was pretty uneventful. Um, we're at 45 degrees here in Blunt, South Dakota, and it's pretty chilly. We're expecting some rain and snow in the forecast the next couple of days, so he might, he might get about three days off here before our next ride. Um, I'm pretty proud of how he's working so far. Um, my uh, cameraman told me I needed to do some great sign off, like, like happy trails or on to the next one or something like that. I don't have anything good. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and check out my other videos. Thanks. Until next time. Till next time.